At first glance, Bethlehem University is just like any other university campus. Some students chit-chatting and laughing between classes, other students sitting on benches or under a tree studying and reading. But then you realize where you are, in the West Bank. This is not a regular campus. There were strong Israeli incursions into Bethlehem, and there was also shooting back and forth between Palestinian militants and Israeli soldiers. Uh, there were never any militants on the university campus, but there were a number who were near the campus. And so Israeli shooting back at them. What happened is uh, during that period, uh, one of our brothers, he would go out in the morning and uh, pick up what he could. And so most of what you find here is a collection that he made from uh, weapons that were found on the campus. Of course, uh, the brother's house here was hit by 117 bullets. Probably the, the most serious damage was done by uh, four Israeli anti-tank uh, missiles that hit our brand new building, Millennium Hall. It had been in service for one month. So these are all parts of a missile. They cost about $180,000 each. It had to be intentionally directed. These uh, missiles are designed to be able to hit a moving tank at a mile and a half. So to hit a stationary building uh, is no, no trick at all. That was a scene from the Salt and Light documentary Across the Divide, which tells the story of Bethlehem University, the only Catholic university in the Holy Land and the very first university in the West Bank. Today we're asking the question, can a Catholic university bring peace to the Holy Land? And for this discussion, we are joined by the Salt and Light producer of Across the Divide, Chris Dimitrenko. Welcome, Chris. Hi, Peter. And also joining us is Berlanti Azam, who joins us via Skype from Missouri. Berlanti, welcome to the show. Thank so, you. So, uh, Chris, you spent a month in Bethlehem while you were making the documentary. What, what did you expect when you first walked in on campus at Bethlehem University? Well, it was the very first thing I did once I arrived in the Holy Land. I'd never been to the Holy Land before, so I arrived at Ben Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv, went straight to Jerusalem, and from there was picked up and went to the campus of, of Bethlehem University. And uh, as you said in your introduction, everything seems very much like a Western university. Yeah. I think that when I went to the campus, I expected maybe everything to be somber, for all the students to be super serious because right. of the situation, or maybe because of maybe how difficult it can be to, to be a university student. But I found that they were, you know, very social. Um, everything was, was very normal until you started talking to them and right. they began to, to very openly share their stories about how the conflict had impacted their lives. And, Everybody has a story in Bethlehem. Yeah, and we'll get to some of those stories. Now, Berlanti, why did you want to attend Bethlehem University? Because, as you said in the first, it is the first Catholic university in Palestine and in the first university in the West Bank. So, as a Christian, I need to have a right to study in a Catholic university. For that reason, I choose Bethlehem University. You live in Gaza. Maybe Chris can explain this a little bit. Can, Gaza, for people that are not familiar with the geography, what's the difference between Gaza and the West Bank? Well, the Palestinian territories are divided between Gaza, the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. And uh, they're divided by Israel proper. And uh, the situation in Gaza is quite different than, than the West Bank. Um, the West Bank is ruled by the more moderate uh, Fatah government, uh -huh. and the Gaza is still ruled by uh, Hamas. They had they had right. won an election back in um, I believe it was uh, 2007. Yeah. And uh, because of that, the security situation is very different because Hamas is very hostile um, towards the Israeli government. And the consequences of what that means for the people who live in Gaza and the opportunities there, I mean, that's something that I'd, I'd like yes, Berlanti actually, share. So Berlanti, um, could you have gone to university in the Gaza? Uh, in fact, I have a choice to go to Gaza, but as I said in the beginning, I am a Christian. I need to study in a Christian university. Okay. So it is easier for me to to be in a Catholic university better than in a university that 
uh, under a conservative Islam university. So how know? complicated is it for you as a resident of Gaza to go to a university in the West Bank? To go to the West Bank, it is, it's very, it's very complicated, in fact, because it is not only related to as a Christian or Muslims, but it's related to the ID that I am from Gaza. I'm not allowed to be in the West Bank. So it is hard to get to the universities in the West Bank. Okay, so before we get to that, because that's, I think, the what, to your story, what happened to you, Berlanti. So what, I mean, you, you mentioned that there is no Christian or Catholic university in, in the Gaza Strip. What are op other opportunities that you might have in the West Bank that you, as a Christian woman, do not have in Gaza? First, Catholic universities. Second, good, well, education in, in, in the West Bank. Third, and the important for me is to live in freedomly by religion. And it's like, I don't care that I'm Muslim or I'm Christian and I'm living in the West Bank, but in Gaza, if I'm Christian, it will be so hard for me because I, it will be like, you know, the conservatives, Hamas, and like a lot of stuff. As a woman, as a Christian woman, it is hard to live in Gaza. For me, West Bank is like better situation, you know. And also better opportunities, better job opportunities too. So once you uh, went to the West Bank to go to university, what was your experience? Was it a normal, I mean, you've been to university in the States, so how, how does that compare with the University of Missouri, let's say? Oh my God. Uh, I'm not going to compare here and there, but like for me, the experience I got from Bethlehem University was really awesome. And I have to live to, to share everything I want. I have a lot of friends till now. We are in contact with them. I have a really good, good education. So, and here in Fontbonne in Missouri, also the same. I have a friends. I have, like, also I'm here in the same, also in a Catholic university. So I'm not going to confer because both of them are like so good for me. Right. But the best thing I got is uh, being in Bethlehem University is to have a lot of support and I, I feel that a lot of people were supporting me either even before my case and I feel that I am one of the family you know so this is what I like yeah now Chris um, you met a lot of the students mm -hmm. um, who are these students that go to Bethlehem University are they all Christian or who does this university serve well, I don't remember the exact statistics, Pedro, but it's um, a slight majority of Muslim students who are on the campus. So even though it's a Catholic university, it serves both uh, Christian students and Muslim students. And the Christians consist of Catholics, also Orthodox students, right. um, male students, women, uh, female students. So there's, there's a mixture. And uh, some of them, a lot of them are from Bethlehem. Um, others have traveled from other uh, cities in the West Bank. Um, some actually commute from East Jerusalem, which is very difficult right. because it means that they have to uh, travel past the, the West the Bank wall. barrier, the security fence or wall, however it's described, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to commute to campus each day. So there's a real diversity of, of the student population right. there. And, and what makes it a Catholic university? I mean, do students have to attend, you know, do they have to study theology or like, no. in terms of the education that they get? Well, in terms of the education they get, um, the religious studies faculty is, is really innovative because um, everybody who uh, takes religious studies courses, they have to learn about Christianity and Islam. Right. And for most people who are um, in the West Bank, Typically, if they're Muslim, they have a Muslim education. Uh, they don't learn anything about Christianity and vice versa for the Christians. But this allows uh, the university to be a bridge of understanding and a lot of misconceptions between the two religions right. um, get, get bridged because of this. Now, uh, the university is run by the De La Salle Christian Brothers, a, right. a religious order, and they were charged with administering the university uh, after it was instituted, which, which itself had to do with actually the first papal visit to uh, the Holy Land, Pope Paul VI, Paul VI, when he went in 1964. Yeah. The Palestinians asked for a Catholic university, and then he, he ultimately gave that responsibility to the De La Salle right. Christian Brothers. Yeah, now Berlanti, you, you're all Arabs, you're all Palestinian, you have lots of Muslim friends, Christian friends, it, to, does it make, are there any distinctions among your friends, or does it matter? 
it doesn't matter because I have also a lot of Muslims friends in Bethlehem University and also a Christian. So we were both together. We don't, the, the religion issue, we don't even think about it. We always live together as like one hand, you know? So yeah. So for me, it doesn't like, it doesn't have any, any issue with the Muslims or like, or me as a Christian to have issue. So it is, it is a good place to live, yeah. to like to study at. Yeah. You know? Now, Berlanti, um, just uh, before you, your graduation, you found yourself uh, on a trip to Ramallah. And on the way back, exactly. tell us uh, what happened. Oh, on my way back from Ramallah, I was exactly kept for seven hours in the checkpoint. And then I have been detained blindfold and handcuffed and taking back in the middle of the night to my country, to Gaza. Okay, so you were deported back to Gaza because you did not have the proper documentation to be because, in... Because, no, the, the Israeli claimed that I because my ID was from Gaza and I'm not allowed to be in the West Bank and I don't have a permission to be in the West Bank. So they detain me and they take me back to Gaza. Okay, um, we're going to take a little break here, not to split up the story, but uh, we do need to take a short break. But we're going to continue this conversation when we come back and we're going to find out what happened to Berlanti when she was picked up at that Israeli checkpoint. So stay tuned. Let us know your perspective. Email us at perspectives at saltandlighttv.org or reach us by mail, perspectives at Salt and Light Television, 114 Richmond Street East, Toronto, Ontario, M5C1P1, or call us toll free at 1-888-302-7181. Let your perspective be heard. Okay, I came from Gaza to here, to Jerusalem, by permission to attend the court for my case, for my study. Since the deportation, this is the first time Israel has allowed her to leave Gaza. She is permitted to stay in Jerusalem for 10 hours. <laughs> Everyone from the university who, who can physically be here will be here. Uh, Brother Peter, our, our Vice Chancellor, Brother Robert, our Vice President for Academic Affairs, myself, those of us who have the permission to come to Jerusalem will be here. Hey. Hi, Berlanti, how, how are you? Fine, and you? Good. Hi. Hi. She's my friend, Alison. Hi. About the last days, I feel worried, scared, pessimistic, actually, about what, what will go on, what's happened. Uh, about if uh, if I will be back to my study or not, that's it. So um, I'm, I hope today will be fine for me. That was another scene from the Salt and Light documentary, Across the Divide. Now, Chris, so what happened next? Well, uh, just to go back to what Berlanti was saying before the break. So yes. she had traveled to Ramallah, uh, it was for a job interview, and it was on her way back that she passed through an Israeli checkpoint. Now, keep in mind, this wasn't a checkpoint on the border between Israel proper and the West Bank. This was a checkpoint, an Israeli operator checkpoint, within the Palestinian territory. Mm -hmm. So imagine America, an American checkpoint, for example, you know, as in you're traveling Canada, yeah. in the middle of Canada. And it was at this checkpoint that they saw that her, her ID permit said that she was from Gaza, and then she was um, blindfolded, handcuffed, and, uh, and taken there, dropped off into Gaza in the middle of the night. And from there, the university started campaigning to be able to bring her back to Bethlehem University. And in the clip that we just saw, uh, that, was, that was before the court case um, where Berlanti finally had her, her day in court to be, to be able to argue, to be able to get back to Bethlehem, yeah. to be able to finish her degree. Now, I won't, I won't share the conclusion of yes. that because that's part of the story of our, of our documentary, whether or not Berlanti got back to Bethlehem to finish her degree. Let me just get a little aside. So Berlanti, um, the documentation that you had 
Did it even allow you to be in Bethlehem at all? Were you in Bethlehem at the university without proper papers? Or were you... As... Uh, no, in fact, I had a permission to be in the West Bank in 2005 for religious issue because I didn't have any choice to be there other than this choice to have a religious issue. But the Israeli claim that it is expired and I'm not, I'm, I'm past Israel without like an illegal way, which is not. Okay, so you went, when you went to Bethlehem University, you had the proper documents to be in the West Bank to go to university, but you didn't understand that it had expired. You thought that it was still okay. Well, it's important to mention that this was a, a religious visa that, that Berlanti traveled from Gaza um, to be able to eventually get into the West Bank to Bethlehem. And uh, the Israeli government has, has a policy whereby uh, they were not and uh, continue to, uh, to prevent students from Gaza, undergraduate students, to be able to travel to the West Bank to be able to get these educational opportunities. And so, um, you know, for that reason, there's very few students who have been able to get to Bethlehem University. Okay, so I was going to ask you how mm -hmm. common is this experience among students at the university, but you're saying that it isn't common to have students that are Gaza residents attending Bethlehem University because they just can't. Well, I don't know exactly how many students from Gaza are currently enrolled uh, in Bethlehem University, mm -hmm. but there are certainly students um, and other people in the West Bank who are in a similar situation as Berlanti in that they have these ID cards which say they're from Gaza. They are not allowed to change their residency to say that they are from the West Bank, even though they have been living there for years like Berlanti did. Right. Is there any consideration on the part of the Christian Brothers to have a satellite campus in Bethlehem so that students from Gaza can attend Bethlehem University without physically being in Bethlehem? Unfortunately, it's really difficult to be able to uh, bring in teachers into the Gaza Strip, to be able to bring in goods, mm -hmm. supplies, uh, because uh, the border is so tightly controlled. Uh, theoretically, it would be much simpler to offer permits to, to students who they've maybe done a security screening as they did for, for Berlanti when she got her um, permit to be able to visit religious sites, right. which said, you know, this person is not a security risk. Right. You know, at the same time, and this, this is what our, our documentary explores, um, you know, Israel has, you know, rightly some very valid security concerns given the hostile Hamas government there, which won't recognize Israel's right to exist, which has supported terror before. And the question is, um, you know, what is going too far in terms of protecting their own security mm -hmm. interests when, uh, when it has consequences for, for young people who are trying to get an opportunity like education? Now, Berlanti, I don't want to give away the ending necessarily because we do want people to watch the documentary, but did you find that you had a lot of support, not just from, I guess, your professors at the university and your friends, but even from Israelis themselves. I know that your lawyer was an Israeli lawyer. What sort of support did you receive in your, in your case? Uh, as I said, I get a support from Bethlehem University at the beginning, at the, at the beginning and the, at the end. Until now, they are with me. And uh, the support I got from the Israeli side was from Gisha. Uh, my lawyer, uh, they were Israeli and they were appealing my case and they were fighting to get, to get me back to Bethlehem University. So I think, and also not only inside Palestine and Israel, inside all over the world, I get all supports for get me back to my university. Uh, so I'm not going to say that they do not help me, the Israeli, they do, but the, the fact the Israeli military do not help me by do not letting me back to my study. Is it easier for a resident of Gaza than to go to university outside of Palestine, uh, to Europe or North America, than it is for them to go across Israel into the West Bank? <laughs> for, it is really a hard question to answer, but I will answer you. It is hard for even for all over the world. Because when I get out from the West Bank, it, Gaza were in the big siege until now it is under the siege. So. Uh, uh, during that time, a lot of students tried to get out, like, for example, for Jordan, uh, Egypt, but it was so hard and it's so complicated. So the easiest way to stay in Gaza. Yeah. Now, uh, to go back to the original question, um, 
maybe what difference has going to Bethlehem University made in your life? Do you think that a university like Bethlehem University can make a difference in the Holy Land with the situation between the Israelis and the Palestinians, the Jews and the Arabs? Sure. It is like what I see through Bethlehem support when when I was on my, like, after my case and also the support for the student who were in Gaza and they tried to to enter Bethlehem University and they were fighting Bethlehem University to get them to the campus. So it is make a lot of difference, you know, because I think it, it made a lot of Gaza people also think about to fight to go to take their rights to go to Bethlehem, for example, you know. So it, it uh, uh, being in Bethlehem University in Gaza or in Palestine in general, it's the like the best issue we have. Yeah, Chris, uh, I would add to that, and it sounds cliche, but I think it's really about hope. Um, the Palestinian people they're very frustrated about their political situation, and what's the avenue going to be for for that frustration? Mm -hmm. Um, the avenue can be for, unfortunately for some people, um, violent resistance. Um, that that is their ability to be able to establish a, a Palestinian state. Whereas the alternative that Bethlehem University is proposing is, is building leaders who are educated to be able to build um, a future Palestinian state. Mm -hmm. And both uh, the Israeli leaders and the Palestinian leaders, they all agree that the two-state solution is what we ultimately need. Um, however, the infrastructure hasn't been in place. And so we need to have educated uh, Palestinians who are willing to build up this society, um, who can see a future in their own lives mm -hmm. um, for Palestinian society, and also who are educated about um, a Christian response to situations of conflict. Yeah, fascinating story. I mean, thank you for sharing it, Berlanti. Thank you, Chris, for bringing this story to light through the documentary. If you want to find out more about Across the Divide, it's as simple as going online, saltandlighttv.org slash across the divide. All the information is there. We're going to conclude our discussion by reflecting on a scripture passage. We always leave the last word to the one who is the word. And this one is from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. So again, that's from the first letter of, to the Corinthians. Berlanti, would you like to offer a short reflection? In fact, this is this have a great little reflection on me because uh, no matter what what my nationality is or where I am or what is going on, as the body is have a lot of stuff, a lot of muscles, a lot of like hands and everything. Also, the the human being doesn't like doesn't be without anybody without anybody. So it is a big support for me. To be with people who are supporting me and also it doesn't matter as i said where what what is my religion is what is my nationality is uh, all in front of god we are the same so the this is spirit for me so i don't distinguish between any things mm -hmm. thank you chris <laughs> well we often when we hear these passages we think about how um you know, God was bringing uh, Jews and Greeks together and that they could be uh, together worshiping um, through Jesus and that mm -hmm. there weren't those distinctions. And yet, you know, we see that those divisions still exist. And, uh, and I believe that we're called to continue that, that work of, of reconciling and bringing people together under God. I think the work is, is far from accomplished. Yes, thank you. Um, but you are trying to do that work and thank you for, for that. Thank you, Berlanti. We have to leave it there. We've been, spe We've been speaking to uh, Chris Dimitrenko, who's the producer of the new Salt and Light documentary, Across the Divide, which tells the story of Bethlehem University. And joining us via Skype from Missouri is Berlanti Azam. That brings us to the end of the program. If you missed any portion of this program or to watch any Perspectives Weekly episodes, 
visit us online, saltandlighttv.org slash perspectives, and be sure to check us out on Facebook. That's where we post the question of the week. Remember, we cannot do this show without your perspective. So thank you very much. That's all for tonight, and we'll see you next week.